G'day, fellas, and welcome to a, uh, a different kind of video. Uh, first and foremost, hello. Second and second and foremost, second of all, uh, we're playing Age of Empires three today. It's been a while since we've uh, we've casted a game, and we're not really playing it. We got, we are casting it. We are actually casting a tournament uh, that is over there. So we were actually going to be playing some more casting some Age of Empires four, uh, but uh, the players well, there was a bit of a change of the the situation. So instead, we're going to be casting Age of Empires three instead. So a little bit of a surprise. Now a couple of players that uh, you may indeed recognize. The first one we've got who spawns down on the south side of the map. We've got G's down here, and he's playing the sweet. And that excites me greatly. So we'll start off by having a look at his deck. He hasn't actually chosen it yet, so we won't we won't do that just yet. Uh, he's picked up a pretty nice treasure down here, though. 80 food already. Um, got his top down on the mine. Everything is looking good for him. Uh, main thing is he needs to get those animals over here as quickly as possible. I'm not sure what these guys' ranks are, uh, but Lionheart, uh, who spawns on the opposite side of the map, let's do uh, let's go check out Lionheart. So Lionheart, who spawns over here, this guy's quite a uh, quite a good player. Very high ranked. Uh, I used to love watching his stream all the time when I was playing Age of Empires 3 back in the day. Uh, I would always chill out and watch some Lionheart. But obviously, you know, it's uh, since Age of Empires 4 has come out, it's been a, a lot less that we uh, we spend time together. And, uh, you know, and sort of like an old friend, we've grown apart. But uh, it's good to be back. It feels great to be in here. There's a lot of cool things that I have seen in Age of Empires 3 that I have almost grown to forget. Well, not grown to forget, but, you know, it, it's kind of like... It's, it, this is, this is going to be weird to say, but you know when you see, like, an old friend... And you're like, man, I'm, I miss spending time with you. Like, you, you're you such a such a good friend. It, it's that kind of thing. Like, there's a lot of cool stuff. Like, um, when I, I was in the, the main menus earlier, and I was hovering over someone's name, and it showed me, like, their rating. I was going to go check their rating, but it actually showed me their rating. I'm like, that's cool. I love that. But uh, speaking of other things I love, let's talk about Lionheart, and let's talk about what his deck is for us today. Hard to see what the cards are, but we'll try our best. We'll zoom in there nice and close. So Economic Theory, Age 1, Age 2. It looks like a standard uh, attack deck going here for the Abus uh, attack or the, the artillery attack. And then in the third age, actually going to be picking up a fort. Now, this is kind of interesting. I don't know. Have you guys seen much of the forts recently? I don't know. Um, when I left Age of Empires 4, forts were kind of a meme. You would only really make them if you were going for, like, the Portuguese defensive play. You guys remember that Portuguese build order that people would do? Looks like we got ourselves a bit of a treasure contention down here towards the south. Looks like Lionheart going to be able to pick that one up. Rather, G's actually going to be taking it. It's gentle Pete, not so gentle today. We'll check out with G's. We'll see how he's doing. So he's dropped down a second top, and we're going to zoom all the way out because why the hell not? We can afford to do it. Now, I'm, I'm running a, um, a 3070, a 3080, maybe a 3090. I don't know. It's a three series card. We're getting a little bit of frame, not frame drops, but a little bit of lag. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Um, so if, if you do see that, I prom I promise it's not on my side and I apologize. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, there's a, these little freezes, the little stutters that happen. Uh, so hopefully it doesn't happen too much, but, uh, I mean, we're going to stay zoomed out. I like it. It is, it is awesome to be out this far. Um, but, uh, one of the things I've got to have to get used to is just the viewing, uh, that, that happens. So Age of Empires 3, it's a little bit different to Age of Empires 4. And, you know, a, a, as an Age of Empires 4 player, for the most part, uh, in recent times, uh, it's going to take me some time to get back used to it. But now we, we see the age ups beginning. Uh, it looks like we've got the governor going to be coming through for G's. Uh, kind of interesting for him to be going that. Obviously, he's got other options, including Philosopher's Prince, including the... Uh, what was the lady? You guys remember the lady who brings the cows and the settlers? The settler lady. The cow lady. <laughs> that was my, my go-to uh, back in the day. But uh, obviously, the governor was always a good option. The naturalist. Thank you very much, Mini Mold. And obviously, we do have the chat... Uh, up at the moment as well. So you guys will be able to see all the wonderful community characters that you come to know and love. People like Mini Mold, people like Ethan, all those good Age of Empires 3 fans that uh, looks like Lionheart now up into the uh, the second age. Going to be looking to go for a fast fortress here. Almost said fast castle, and i got to watch out from saying that. A little bit of an overgather here on the gold. So you can see he's already up to almost 400 gold. Um, and a bit of a difficult spot for him there because you can see by the time that 700 gold arrives, he's going to have more than he needs in the bank. Now, is he looking to potentially get maybe Galata Tower? Maybe that's what what he's potentially thinking about. But I mean, he's still quite a way off that. He's sitting at the moment only on 14 villages. So yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit it's a little bit weird that he's over gathering so heavily right now. I, I guess he just assumes. If he, if he uses his three gold villages to pick up the gold, he should be fine. But, uh, yeah, a bit, bit of a misplay. Actually taking the, ma the majority... Yo, Lionheart. 
Is it the Cree? Yeah, it's the Cree. Okay, maybe, maybe he's looking to do some sort of eco boom here. Um, now the map that we're playing on, I can't remember the name of this map. I'm, I, it's, I want to go with. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, it's it's all gone. It's like, it is, like, I've just, all that information has just been dropped out this year. This is Dakota. Thank you very much, Vividly Plain. Yes, it is, it is that one. It is, uh, yes, it is that map. We got Big Bess in the chat as well. How you doing, Bess? Long time no see, mate. Good to see you back for some AOE3 content. 700 wood now going to be coming in for Lionheart as well. So coming into this game, you, you, as soon as you... I, I guess the best way to think about it is you've got a known quantity and an unknown quantity. Now, I know Lionheart. I know how good he is. I've lost to him before many a time. Uh, so I know he's a decent player. And so I'm always going to assume that he's going to be, you know, the, the winner here, the favorite, the pocket. Um, but we'll see how his opponent goes. Because, I mean, G's on the other side of the map is playing as the, uh, is playing as the Swedes. Uh, so it looks like he was anticipating a little bit of aggression in the early game. So we can see that that... Uh, that outpost is quite close to his town center. His town center, his town center. Gentle Pete going out to do a little bit of soul searching. We'll see how he goes with it. But uh, when it comes to the torp boom, I mean, at this point, he's going to, to be going for a fast fortress as well. We see the 700 wood coming in behind this. Is this the new Swede meta? I don't know. We're going to find out, though. Uh, we'll have a look at what his deck is. So you can see the blueberries in there. My my, my favorite blueberries, uh, Ironworks, going to be in there as well. Looks like it's been nerfed even further. Uh, actually, it looks about the same as I remember it. Uh, I think we've got the infantry team HP card. We've got the cavalry HP card. Uh, we do indeed. Actually, is that infantry? Oh, yeah, hand infantry as well. Uh, and then we got blackberries, of course. Gentle Pete just hanging out for the moment. Uh, we've got blackberries in there. And then we've got uh, two falcs. We've got the 10 Jaegers in there. Of course, we've got Svi lifeguard. And, of course, uh, 16. I mean, this is looking very standard. Honestly, if, the, if this was my deck... When I left Age of Empires 3, I wouldn't be surprised. The, the main difference here is that the two leather cannons, obviously they cost 150 food. It never used to be that way, but I think that's that's obviously such a great change, such an important change. Really nice find over on the east of the map here as well. G's going to be picking up a, a native scout. But I'm curious to see what he looks to go into. I mean, we've got a double barracks coming out. Could it be spears? I say spears. Could it be pikes? Uh, could it be crossbows? I've got a sneaking suspicion it's not. I've, I, I suspect it may be the Corollian. But we'll see how he plays it. A lot of villagers on gold here as well. Going to be going up to the next stage with the bishop. So looking to get that second town center up and really try and hunker down. Uh, so we'll, we'll check in on the other side of the map. We'll see how Lionheart is doing. He's up to the third age already. Uh, now, when he went up, I can only assume he's got four Abus out. So he's gone to have gone up with the Marksman. Uh, so apologies for not checking that. Shipping in the eight Janissaries now. Probably going to have the two Falks coming in after that. Beautiful macro from him. Take a, take a look at how low those resources are. So one of the big things when you are... I, I guess one of the indicators for a really good player is impressive macro. And, and how do you tell if a player's got good macro or not? Their resources are always very, very low. And that's exactly what we see down here for Lionheart. And he knows exactly what he needs to do. He's got all of his... He's got four vills. These guys are just going to be there to create houses. He's got enough villagers on food. A fair few on gold, actually. But uh, now potential misplay coming out here from G's. A few Corollians coming up to meet this trading post. Actually going to get picked off. Nice little early push already with the Avis guns. We're going to start zooming in just so you guys can actually see the battle because at the moment, everybody looks like ants from up here. You guys know the the uh, the Simpsons reference? I think that's a Simpsons reference. They're on the plane. They're flying out. It's, it's Grandpa Simpson, Abe. He's like, everybody looks like ants from here. And they're just on the tarmac. One villager almost goes down. I think he manages to get it into the outpost. We'll, uh, we'll pull back the fog of war. He's got to be careful here. Covered wagon, unfortunately, getting caught in between the two villagers. Terrible, terrible mistake right now. Lionheart going to be able to pick up a free TC. Jeez, actually... Oh, jeez. You hate to see it. He's going to let... He's going to leave it. Oh, the nicest guy in Age of Empires history right here. You wouldn't think we were in a tournament game after that. He literally leaves the town center and deletes the top so he can get it through. You could have just pulled back the villager, geez. Oh, geez, it's terrible damage. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, gosh. Is he going to let it? He's, I think he's just going to let it go. What a nice guy. Lionheart being so sweet. Oh, gosh. You can see, like, he definitely would have had vision on that. Oh, geez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm saying that naturally. That's not even me trying to meme at this point. A uh, little bit of a missed macro here. Not enough villagers on uh, on wood and uh, falls behind with the house, it seems. Actually manages to get down the house now, but not going to be in time to finish that batch. We'll tune in with G's and see how he's doing on his side. Still manages to get the Jaegers in, but you got to remember, this is the, the thing that I always said about Jaegers. 
when I was playing Sweden, a lot of people would bring it up. They'd be like, Drongo, you dickhead. Just make Jaegers. You know, you can make them in your in, in your barracks. And and by, by the way, the new Jaeger skin looks fucking sick. Uh, so we will say that much. But a Jaeger has got 250 health. A normal skirmisher, I think it's got like 110. A Falconet is still going to kill them. Yeah, so like one shot from the Falconet still kills the Jaeger. So it's not like, sure, they're twice as strong, but they still get killed by the same volley that every other skirm gets killed by. Uh, and so that was always sort of my counterpoint. But uh, now we see G's going to be under significant attack, still getting siege down, doing a great job of focusing down the uh, the Falconet. Needs to call Minuteman exactly what he's going to have happen right now. Also got the hacker pellets coming in. So looking for a little bit of a play. The villager pool also going to be coming out here as well. Villagers getting in on top of it at the same time, focusing down those Jaegers on the back line. Really smart use here of, uh, of those... Uh, those uh, villagers on the front and he does manage to push it back uh so hacker pellet's going to be coming out so starting to throw around the questions like i don't know if you probably should have let that uh that town center get away um but uh yeah interesting interesting outplay or interesting uh play hacker pellets are out now Typically, what you want to do, get these guys into melee mode. Now, we've got some interesting new things down here. Uh, we've got pets, handshock infantry, and villager. Um, so, ideally, what you'd be doing, put these guys into hand combat mode and head over towards your opponent's side. So, what you're going to be looking for, typically, are those dead carcasses on the ground. If you can spot any dead carcasses, that's what you want to find. These bad boys right here, if you want to click on it, you can see very clearly there are a lot of villagers on this bad boy. Probably six or seven villagers on that. Yeah, you can see there's just plenty of villagers there. Uh, and that's where I'd be sending my hacker pellets quick smart. You can see that uh, if we have a look at from Lionheart's perspective, you know, he's got line of sight out here. He would he'd have to try and spot those before they get in. So we'll see how he plays it out. We'll have a look. And uh, actually picking up all of the Kray Kura de Bar at this stage of the game. So we're 11 minutes through and he's already got all five of those bad boys out. So if we take a look at the village account, uh, 28 villagers. There you go. 28 villagers. Working on that trading post now. So, I mean, from here, where do where do we go from here? Mamelukes, that's obviously Lionheart's play. And I think that's a pretty smart move. He can just play Genissary Mameluke uh, and uh, and look to sort of transition to that. G's now reaching level six home city. Makes me wonder whether G's is actually smurfing right now. Um, G's going to be coming in. Village are going to get picked off here for sure. Looks like Lionheart going to be able to uh, spot it out. It's going to be targeting down. Look how much damage comes out right there. A huge amount of damage. First villager going down. Second villager going down. Third villager down. Four villagers down. And now looking to pick up some more villagers as they head underneath the town center. Falls back with those villagers. And also looking to take out the uh, the trading post. But a bit of a misplay here. The Corollian's going to be trying to repel off these Mamelukes in, uh, in uh, range. But obviously not having a lot of luck. And this is so damn hard right now for G's because all of his, uh, all of his Jaegers are going to be taken out. And I suspect that uh, they're not going to be too long for the world. Uh, really needs to get these units back. Uh, these hacker pellets are going to do very effectively against that mam, or against that mameluke mass. But the issue is now that this mass of Genissaries continues to build up for him. Geez, hasn't really had much time uh, to keep building up his own uh, force. Has has actually shipped in a thousand gold. So we take a look there. You can see he's got a thousand gold in here, but just really not a, lo a lot of uh, a lot of villages or a, a lot of resources. And um, he resigned. So good game gets called. We'll check uh, quickly what the post game looks like, where these two players were at when it comes to the fights that broke out. So you can see that Jeez uh, was always in a bit of a, a difficult spot. That's military count. We probably want military pop. So that first push came in. You can see when the two Falconets get taken out. but uh, And then he manages to pull it up in the end, the Mamelukes. I mean, it never really looked doubtful um, once those Mamelukes came out. So, fellas, if you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this little... I guess we could say a bit of a time capsule right here. I know you guys on Twitch are enjoying it. So uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. And uh, stay tuned for some more Age of Empires 3 content.